And surrender our all to him, body, soul, and spirit. Amen. And I believe that he will bless in the midst of the fiery furnace. I believe he will bless in the midst of the lion's den. And I believe he will bless in the midst of Hesperia, California. Amen. Amen. So my heart's desire, and please try and maybe you can understand me a little bit better, is to see the Hesperia full gospel ministry once again, once again. Listen to what I'm saying. Once again, aflame with God's Holy Ghost power. Amen. Yes, amen. That the lost, hear me now, this is my desire now, is that the lost might get saved and that the lame might be healed yes. and that the blind might see and the deaf might hear and those that are bound up might be set free. That is my desire. Amen. amen. Yes. And for no other reason, no other reason than to bring glory to our great God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of his Holy Spirit. That Amen. is my, de I don't know what your desire is when you, when you do the things that you do. I hope your desire is to further the kingdom of God and see people saved, healed, delivered, and set free. Yes. Amen. 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 That, whether I show it, whether it radiates from me or not, doesn't matter. That is what my heart's desire is, is to see these things come to pass. I'm looking forward once again to see a church that is on fire, is a flame, a church that's a mighty, mighty instrument in the hand of God. And this church is, and we've kind of cooled off a little bit, amen, but we are a mighty instrument in the hand of God. If we will unite and lay aside all these things that Satan throws at us amen. and begin to lift up the name of Jesus. I refuse, and I want you to understand this today, and you can do with it whatever you want, but I refuse to pastor a religious country club. Amen? Amen. Amen. Full of cliques, playing uh, water boy to the game of life. And I see things like that beginning to lift their head, and I would want to want to come against them now. Turn with me, if you would, to Acts, the second chapter. By the way, tonight, I'm going to bring a little lesson on the 144,000. You might be here. Amen. Acts, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. Well, we're just going to read the first verse right now. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. In the day, on the day of Pentecost, when it was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. There were multiplied thousands of people in Jerusalem at that particular time. But on this day, there were 120. 120 people that were the center of attention. Now you can go back to the first chapter and to the... Uh, 15th verse. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about 120. So if you've often wondered where they got that particular number, there you can find it, okay, in the first chapter of Acts in the 15th verse. It's so important, folks, 
Now, we, we hear a lot of stories and a lot of things, like I started off with telling you about the church and the songbook <coughs> in uh, years ago. But when we get to preaching God's word, we got to stay with thus saith the Lord and have the scriptures to back up what we say. Amen? Amen. Because there's enough Mickey Mouse stuff going on out there. We need to get back to where uh, we are preaching God's word. And that's what we're going to try to do today. So there were 120 people that were assembled. And they were the center of attraction in that particular day. They were the Lord's disciples. They were the Lord's believers. They were the faithful to the orders of Jesus Christ to go and wait or tarry there in Jerusalem. The Jews held this, this feast for some 1,500 years. And the one thing they did was to take, take grain, wheat grain, and grind it into flour. And then they mixed it with oil and leaven and produce two loaves of bread. Amen? Amen? They baked two loaves of bread. Then some sacrifices were made. There were seven lambs without spot or blemish. There was one young bullock and there were two rams. And these would be sacrificed as a burnt offering. There were 10 sacrifices altogether, and we're not going to go into all of them today. But, but what, what does that mean? What does, what's this all about? Well, the 10 sacrifices spoke of our peace that we have with the Lord Jesus Christ through his blood. Folks, we, we never need to diminish the power and the strength of the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm afraid in this modern church age that we're in that the blood is being slowly but surely pushed aside. They've taken it out of the songbooks in many of the churches. They, they call us that still preach and teach the blood a bloody religion. Well, praise God, we are a bloody religion. Amen. Thank God for the blood. Amen. Amen. If it wasn't Amen. for the blood of Jesus washing our sins away, we wouldn't be Amen. saved today. The oil that was mixed into the the bread that represents the Holy Spirit. Oil in the Bible is the emblem of the Holy Spirit, is one of the emblems of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Did you all know that? I think I did. <clears throat> the two loaves, and this is so important, folks, the two loaves pictured the body of Christ. Pictured the body of Christ. Pictured the church. The church is the body of Christ. You and I are the body of Christ. You and I are the church. Amen? Amen. Because the church is now made up, listen to me, is now made up of Jews and Gentiles. Prior to that time, the, what we would consider the people of God was the Jews, amen? amen. The Amorites, the Hittites, the Canaanites, uh, all those other ites that were out there, they weren't part of God's family. They weren't part of the church, okay? The church today now is made up of the Jews and the Gentiles. But, but, but now listen, those Jews have to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, all right? Just because they're a Jew does not mean they are part of the body of Christ. They are not part of the church. Y'all got that? Amen. The church now consists of those that have accepted, that are born again, that have been washed in the blood, that are they become then part of the body of Christ. Before the day of Pentecost, they, they were two individual grains of wheat. Can, can you all understand what I'm trying to, to get across to you today? After Pentecost, they became one body. They were baked into a loaf of bread, one body. 120 went into the upper room, individual grains, and now they're God's loaf baked together with the Jews that accept Jesus Christ. Y'all, Can y'all understand that? Yeah. Yeah. We have to be very careful that we don't get too arrogant and too high-minded and too aloof because we've been born again because the Jews were actually the ones that Jesus came to in the beginning right. and they rejected him. But now we are, we are one. If you accept Christ, it doesn't matter whether you're Jew or Gentile, whether you're black or white or green or yellow, 
or whether you're from Hesperia or whether you're from the end. Let me, let me tell you something. Just because your mom and daddy were, were Christian does not mean that you're a Christian. Just because you were born in the United States of America does not mean that you're a Christian. You must be born again. You must accept Jesus Christ to become part of the body. And I want to tell you something when it comes to taking communion. Communion is for those that know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Right. And many today just jump in and take it and they have no idea what they're doing. It's because everybody else in the room is doing it and so they don't want to be shamed. <clears throat> leaven. Leaven is the emblem of sin. And God, I believe, is reminding us, though we become one, and though we have the Holy Spirit, listen, listen, listen. A lot of you probably never heard this before and may disagree with me. Because you are one and because you have the Holy Spirit, we are not totally purged, listen, not totally purged of sin until the rapture and Jesus comes again. You all understand why I'm saying that? Huh? Yes. You understand, Frank? You're not totally purged because you still have sin That's right. in your body. You still have sin in your mind. Your spirit man has been purged, but your physical body and your soul man has not been. Okay? When you're born again, you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You've accepted His blood as washing your sins away. Now, I know you're not all purged. Ron has a problem. Carol has a problem. This Carol has a problem. You have a problem. You have a problem. You have a problem. You have. I don't have any problems. Oh, really? I'm not. I'm talking about in your body. Frank has a problem. I have a problem. I crave certain things that I shouldn't have. Al craves fried apple pies that he shouldn't have. Amen. He's such a good, good, faithful worker. He found me a small pumpkin pie. Yep. <laughs> and I was craving a small pumpkin pie. <laughs> and now I want to thank you because I still had one of those bottles of whipped cream at home. Remember that we had here last year, I think. And, uh, you know, aerosol. And it, oh, it made that pumpkin pie taste so good. So thank you. I want to thank you. You folks should thank Al for what he does. He does Amen. a lot around here. And some of the others help too. I know that. But. He's so faithful to every day get up and unless his C and I dog leaves and then he has to go down to the <coughs> eye doctor and get checked out again. <clears throat> so in in verse one here in in uh, the second chapter of Acts, they were keeping the feast of Passover. But now I want you to notice something. Let's let's read down through five in the second chapter. And suddenly, they're all of one accord in an upper room, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Folks, if, this is why those of you that might have some other perversion of the Bible, you've got to be careful. Because one word left out can change the whole meaning of the scripture. So be very careful. Be very careful. Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. Now, it doesn't say that there was a mighty rushing wind, does it? Does it? No. It says there was a sound that sounded like a mighty rushing wind. Can you all see that? This is why you have to read. You have to read and know what you're reading. And it filled, the sound filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it set upon each of them. Can you all read? I don't care what you think. What, do you, what does the word say? It was like, it was like fire. And it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. I want you to, to notice four or five things that are the ingredients of a church aflame, a church on fire. Stay with me now. A church that will, will make an, 
impact on any community. It doesn't matter where it's at, whether it's here or England or China or Japan or wherever. A church that's on fire for God. Look at Paul Y. Cho over in Korea, the largest church in the history of Christianity. And it started, my friends, in the town dump with Paul Cho over in South Korea. Okay. But because he was faithful and because that church was on fire, and do you know they have a mountain that they go pray 24 hours a day, there's prayer going on. <coughs> The devil, the devil has got them surrounded by water on one side and the communists on the other side, and yet they are the biggest, most powerful church in the history of Christianity. Isn't that something? And you can eat those apples if you want to. I want you to look at the first chapter again in the eighth verse of Acts. It says, But ye shall receive power, after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. It doesn't say you shall receive power by sitting on your dead rear ends in a church somewhere. It says you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes on you. Amen. Now, he's talking about the day of Pentecost when it would be poured out. But the Holy Ghost can manifest himself upon you anywhere, at any time. It's a matter of you yielding to him and surrendering, and the Holy Spirit will fill you and give you strength and power you never knew you had. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be a witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria, unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Jesus is talking to a bunch of people here that didn't have any idea what he was talking about, did he? You know, there are many people in the church today that have no idea what's being talked about. In the churches that deny the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, have no idea what you and I are talking about, do they? They read words, but they don't get an understanding of what God is trying to say. Supernatural power. Visualize. The Bible says, and we just read it, they're set on every man's head that were in that upper room, a flame of fire. Do you know what that tells me? There were 120 human candles Amen. giving out the light of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. See, we miss, we miss what God's trying to say. We need that power so that we can let Amen. your light so shine before men that they may see your good works Amen. and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You know what, folks? We need to lay self aside. When we lay self aside, then the Holy Spirit can take over and the light of Jesus Christ will begin to shine. Amen? Amen. There was a sound of the wind. It was a symbol also of the Spirit. Thank God, thank God, thank God for the wind. It comes from heaven. Amen? Amen. And goes where it will. John 3, 8. The wind comes from heaven and goes where it will. If we will allow the wind of the Holy Spirit to work through us, folks, there's no telling what could happen in this full gospel church here in Hesperia. Cloven tongues like as a fire. Also, also a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Fire spreads and consumes and God wants all oh mine. God wants to consume our lives for his glory. Amen. God wants to consume our lives for His glory. Amen. He wants to burn out the impurities that are in us. Amen. Fire warms. Fire warms. It won't be long, folks. We'll be turning the heaters back on and turning the coolers off. That's right. <sighs> so I would say today, Father, Father, precious Heavenly Father, forgive our cold services and our cold hearts. Amen. I say that. Amen. I say that in a prayer to my Heavenly Father, yes. including myself in it. Fire purges, it burns out impurities, it gives light, amen. And then the Holy Spirit, the supernatural power that we need in the church, vocalizes in verse 4, it says, they spoke as the Spirit gave them utterance. Is that what your Bible says? They spoke as the Spirit gave them utterance. Not as they wanted to, folks, listen to me. We, we have to be prepared to speak 
when the Spirit gives utterance. Amen? Amen. Amen. We have to be prepared. In other words, we need to be filled with the Word of God. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask what you will and it shall be done. Amen? Amen. We need to be ready for the Holy Spirit to speak through us. A thousand heard them speak. Listen, oh my goodness, 120 in the upper room. And the thousands heard them speak in their own tongue or their own language. It was a sign to the Jews and unbelievers that were in the crowd. I don't know whether you ever heard this before, but I want to share something else with you. Bethlehem was God with us. Amen? Amen. Calvary was God for us. Amen. Amen. Pentecost is God in us. Amen. Folks, folks, many people today think they're saved because they know that God was with us. Many people think they're saved because they know that God was for us. But you can only be saved if God is within you. Amen. Yes. You all got that? Amen. Lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily besets you. The weight and the sin of ignorance. The weight and the sin of prejudice, the weight and the sin of doctrine and creed. Amen. Amen. We need to thank God for Pentecost. Do you remember what the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter in the 19th verse? You remember? Paul said, speaking to this, this group of believers that had all kinds of crazy things going on in their church that were just absolutely against the Word of God, Paul says, what? I could say to you today, what? Don't you know that you're the temple of the Holy Ghost? If you're the temple of the Holy Ghost, let me tell you something. Those filthy stories that you're telling will go out of your room. Those off-color jokes that you're telling will leave you. Those things that you're doing that you know are not of God, you'll lay aside. Amen? Know you not that, you're, that you're the, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? which is in you, which you have, and you're not your own, you belong to God. That's something. A lot of church people don't know that. They think this is my body, I can do with it what I want to. This is my mouth, I'll say what I want to. No, no, no. You're the temple if you're saved, if you're truly born again, if you're truly born again, I say it again, if you're truly born again, I remember Sister Marshall used to say, Pastor, why do you always say truly born again? Because there are a lot of people that aren't truly born again, amen? Amen. A lot of people are just church members. They're not born again. And I'm talking about the member of the local church, not the members of the body of Christ, amen. If we have supernatural power, which we should have, if we really understand what the Word has said, we will be vitalized, amen? amen. Vitalized. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Spirit will begin to vitalize us, amen? Filled with the Holy Ghost. That's what men, women, boys, girls, preachers, deacons, elders, song leaders, that's what we need today, folks. We need to be vitalized. We need to be filled amen. to overflowing with the mighty Holy Ghost of God our precious Savior, Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen? Amen? On the day of Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost, there were 120. And that 120 led 3,000 to Christ. Amen. Yes. Isn't that something? 120, because they were vitalized. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They had supernatural power. Today, 3,000 have trouble leading 120 to the Lord. That's right. That may sound funny, but that's a reality, folks. We need to be filled, be filled, be filled, be vitalized. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. And I'll tell you something else we need is some spiritual preaching. You talking to yourself, Pastor? Absolutely. We need some spiritual preaching in the churches <laughs> throughout the world. Peter preached it. Please get a hold of this. Peter preached a Christ-centered <coughs> message. Let's look at verses 22 of the second chapter of Acts. Okay. 
Second chapter, 22, and we'll read down through 26. You men of Israel, Peter's standing up now and he's preaching to all these that are devout men of all nations that are assembled there. You men of Israel, hear these words. Now listen to what Peter preaches. He doesn't preach about, I, I, I've got up here and told you different stories about my grandfather and the assembly of God and, and different things I've mentioned about. But no, 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 P Peter didn't do that. Listen, you shouldn't come to church to want to hear funny stories from me. That's right. You yeah. shouldn't come to church to want to hear anything except Christ and Him. You all got that? Amen. We come in, we can sit at home and turn on these Mickey Mouse artists on television. We can watch cartoons, we can watch the news, we can watch sitcom, whatever you want. You come to church, you should come to want to hear about Jesus. Amen. 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 You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God. Did you notice what it's, I don't know what it says in your Bible, but it says a man approved of God. Amen. Is that what it says? A man. I've tried my best to get it across to you that Jesus laid his, his godly powers aside until he was endued with power from on high, until he received the Holy Ghost. You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, the man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. These signs shall follow them that believe. The signs that Jesus is that the, what Peter is speaking of here should be working through you and I today. Amen. We're believers, amen? amen? We need to be vitalized. By him, Jesus, being delivered by the determinant or the, the ordained or the specific, excuse me, counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be whole of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in peace. That's talking about David. We need to, we need to start once again preaching about Jesus' life. In verse 22 through 26, Peter is speaking about this manner of Jesus' life. He's speaking about the meaning, the meaning of Jesus' death. He speaks about the miracle of Jesus' resurrection. He exalts the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what this pulpit is supposed to be about, exalting Jesus Christ, that you might come to a closer walk with him. Amen? Amen? Amen. This is the same Peter, I want you to understand. This is the same Peter that's up there preaching Christ and him crucified is the same Peter that cursed and denied Jesus Christ. That's right. Is that right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> the difference is, the difference is between this Peter and the one that cursed is that now he is filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> Makes a difference, doesn't it? It does. Amen makes a big difference. All the lying, the cheating, the gossiping, and all this bitterness and jealousy and envy and strife will go if the Holy Ghost truly lives in you. Amen. I've had a couple of things in this church, and I'm using this as an example, that bothered me so bad and I had a hard time getting over it. But finally I said, Lord, it's your church. It's your money. I just do what you tell me to do. He's my shepherd. I shall not want. You should wake up in the morning and say, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And so I've laid those things aside. I'm letting God handle it. It's his business anyway. I've got my job is to preach Christ and him crucified. Amen. To have a church on fire or a church of flame. And that's what we're trying to talk about today. We must have, we must have, folks. It's an absolute must. We must have spiritual power and spiritual preaching. Amen? Amen. Amen. We must have it. There is no other way. Peter said, this is that which is spoken of 
by the prophet Joel. Spiritual preaching with spiritual power. Spiritual preaching with spiritual power. Do you think you're the only one that... No, I don't. I talk to whoever it is over here. <laughs> and then we need a saved, a saved people, folks. Look at, look at Acts 2 and begin with 37. Acts 2, 37. Peter is up there and he preached this tremendous message and exalted Jesus Christ in every word that he said. And they were listening, okay? Let's look at 36, verse 30. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly, this is Peter speaking, that God hath made the same Jesus whom ye crucified, both Lord and Christ. Listen, listen. Somewhere in the Word of God it says don't look on their faces. You can look mean at me, you can look disgusted, you can look sick, sober, and sorry, but I'm going to preach what God gives me, whether it torques your jaws or not, okay? You know? Let all the house of Israel, he's talking, listen, listen, he's talking to the ones that crucified him. He said, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. This took a man that is no longer a denier, but this is a man now that's full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Yes. He couldn't, I don't believe Peter could have done it if he hadn't have been filled with the Holy Ghost. Do you? No. Oh my, what power. What power. The power to overcome the fears of the, that the devil would throw against you. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. They were convicted and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus. See, this is why you have to read the word. It didn't say be, it didn't say be baptized. It said repent. Mm -hmm. Amen. Your pastor can dump you until you look like a prune. You'll be so wrinkled up. That's not what it's about. You need to repent. Turn from your sins. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pastor, Pastor, I thought we were supposed to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are. That's what Jesus said to do. Peter is trying to get a point across to these Jews. The one you crucified now, you've got to make an outward yes, amen. confession yes. that you have accepted him inside. This is why Peter isn't denying. Peter isn't going. It's not a contradiction from what Jesus said. We baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to as many as are afar off. Amen. To as many as are afar off. Then they that, now look at this 41st verse. Then they that gladly received his word. Gladly received the word of God speaking through Peter. Gladly received his word, were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Yes. Mm, that's something. 3,000 souls. In order to have a church of flame, you must have a saved people, born again, blood washed, in love with Jesus. Amen. In love with Jesus. Folks, the other day I mentioned about we need to love Jesus more than anything in this world. Nothing that you have, you would have if it wasn't that Jesus allowed That's it. Right, man. Amen. Amen. So you should love him more than you love anything in this Amen. world. Some people just will not get a hold of that. <laughs> those in Acts, those that were saved in Acts, were convicted by the word, that's what it says in verse 37, were converted to the Lord, in verse 38 they repented, and confession of the Lord, they were baptized. And that's something. Amen. That's all because of the word of God. Al, Al, listen to me. I'm not, not putting you down. I'm trying to make a point across. Those people weren't converted, those people weren't in love with Jesus, those people weren't baptized because there was bread on the table. Hmm? It was because the Word of God, the Word of God, then Jesus supplied their needs according to His riches and glory. Yes, you all understand? Amen. If you're coming to church for what's on the table, 
you're as phony as a three dollar bill. That's right. Amen. That's bad, Pastor. No, that's true. That's Amen. True. You should come to worship and to praise God. Right. Amen. And then, then God will bless you in different ways. Different ways. Amen. The Church of Flame, folks, we're getting close. We're going to get out of here in a minute. But a Church of Flame needs a spiritual program. Let's look at uh, verse 41. And fear came upon every soul. We're still in the second chapter. And fear came upon every soul. I don't see anybody coming to church anymore fearing the Lord. I don't even see them coming to church reverencing the Lord. Oh, I shouldn't say it because some of you, I'm, I'm talking about the body of Christ. I'm not talking about you right here. And here I know you love and you reverence and you respect the Lord. And all that believe, where was I at here? 43 verse. 43. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Fear there is reverence, folks. And all that believed were together and had all things common. Folks, in this little church, there should be no divisions. There should be, we should have everything talking about love for one another and love for the, the body of Christ. We should have all things together. But here they go on to say it was even more than that. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily. They continued daily. They didn't stop. They continued daily with one accord, no divisions, in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. And did eat their meat with <coughs> gladness and singleness of heart. Gladness. They were thankful for what God had done. They were thankful for what they had received. They were thankful that they were able to come together and praise Him and not gossip and talk about one another. Amen. Isn't that something, Marie? They were glad that they could come together and praise God daily, continually in the temple. The Bible says, gladness and singleness of heart, comma, praising God, comma, and having favor with all the people, comma, and the Lord, listen, no period, and the Lord, after they had done these things, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. And the Lord added to the church. Listen, you don't have to proselyte. You don't have to go out and bring people in from another. That's not what it don't don't do that here. Don't do that here. Go out and bring some in that don't know Jesus. Amen. Start Amen. telling them, be a be a soul winner and bring them in and we'll feed them. Amen. Amen. We need a spiritual program, folks. Bible study. We have Bible study. Amen. It says they gladly received his word. And they continued in the Apostles' Doctrine. What was the Apostles' Doctrine? Christ and Him crucified. They had fellowship. We have fellowship here, don't we? We need one another. Believe me, we need... I need you, Frank and June and Carol and Ron and Levon and your twin sister there. I say, see, they come in dressed alike. Did you notice that? Amen. <laughs> We need all of you in here, Larry and Carol and Marie and Pam and Jerry and, and uh, <coughs> Rachel, Wanda, Shirley. We need all of you. Chris, we need you, brother. Get your mother here more often, all right? She needs a ride. We need the fellowship. When I see you come in, I get excited inside. This morning I was not excited when I looked and there was only five of us here and it was ten minutes till... And here they come. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And you make me happy. Amen. Amen. And then we have to have a spirit of adoration of praising and loving God. Yes, amen. Mm. I love him, for he is mine. This, this song should be in our hearts continually. Amen. Amen. And then participation. Participation in a church of flame. In service and giving. They took the they took the the uh, resources. And they pulled them. They used their money, their time, and their talents. All for the glory of God. Amen. Not, not for the glory of the full gospel church. Not for the glory of the pastor. But for the glory of God. In everything. Everything. 
we give God the glory. Everything should be at God's disposal. Amen? Amen. Is that right? It was a growing church. It was a growing church. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. In chapter 1 of Acts, the 15th verse, we read it a minute ago, it started with 120 people. In 241, 3,000 souls were added. And more were added daily in 247. Many heard the word and believed 5,000 in Acts 4.4. 4. The entire city is filled with his doctrine in Acts 5.28. His doctrine, his name, amen. The number stopped adding. The number stopped adding began to multiply multiply folks that's what we need to see listen the signs are everywhere when you see these things begin to come to pass lift up your head for your redemption yes. you're all in the signs are everywhere we need to start working a little bit over time laying aside self and begin to do more to every day